Good afternoon, uh, dear chairman, my dear colleagues. Uh, I'm speaking for Samufi, for the BCK9 inhibitor Pralyant. Uh, uh, I would like to address some points very important for, the, for diabetes using these important medications beyond LDL reduction the way ahead in dyslipidemia management. There are many unmet needs in cardiovascular Uh, there are many unmet needs in cardiovascular risk reduction in diabetic patients because we know that diabetes is a very important cardiovascular uh, factor. The patients with acute coronary syndrome and diabetes have about 50% increased long-term mortality compared with those without diabetes. The patients with acute coronary syndrome and diabetes have an increased the cardiovascular risk in post-myocardial infarction. In the Odyssey outcomes, which is a very important trial, the patient with diabetes had approximately two times the incidence of cardiovascular events as those uh, with normal glycemia. And the patients with cardiometabolic multimorbidity with any combination of diabetes this or my chronic infarction and stroke experience, multiplicative mortality risk compared with each condition alone. The Odessi clinical trial program is a huge program for PCK9 inhibitor, adilocumab, and the most important is the Odessi outcome trial. The Odessi outcome trial was carried out in a high risk population, all of whom had experienced a previous cardiovascular event, myocardial infarction, or any stable angina. It's a long term study of cardiovascular outcomes in about 18,924 patients. And it is the only double blind, randomized PCK9 inhibitor cardiovascular outcomes a study with a treat to target LDL approach. 2.8 years follow up and about 44% of patients eligible to be followed for 3.5 years. In conclusion for this important study, we have primary endpoints and secondary endpoints. The primary endpoint are the MACE, reduction of MACE, the measure adverse cardiovascular events. Alirikumab significantly reduced the risk of MACE by about 15%. And in the secondary prevention, the all-cause mortality are decreased by 15%, which is highly significant. The patients who have LDL cholesterol more than 100 milligram per deciliter have beneficial effects more than the patients who have 80 milligram or less. A greater absolute benefit in mass reduction was shown on those patients with LDL cholesterol over 100 milligram per deciliter. And there is a reduction of mass in those patients by 24% and all cause mortality was decreased by 29% which is highly significant. And the safety profile was of adilocumab in those patients demonstrated a favorable safety and tolerability profile even in patients reaching LDL cholesterol below 20, reaching 15 milligram per deciliter. So the all-cause mortality of adilocumab was associated with a reduction in all-cause mortality for LDL cholesterol reduction, adilocumab demonstrated a 
4.7% LDL steel reduction at four years. And the dosing, 78% of alirikumab administration in the study were of the 75 milligram dose. If you look for the populations involved in this study, we have patients with acute coronary syndrome population, though this outcome was 18,900. We have also polyvascular diseases, 80% of patients. Patients with cabbage, 11% of patients. But the diabetic patients were 29% of the population involved in this huge study. We take now the sub-analysis in individuals with diabetes in the Odyssey outcomes. Lyricumab and cardiovascular outcomes in patients with acute coronary syndrome and diabetes. We see here diabetes as a cardiovascular risk factor. Many patients with acute coronary syndrome have a glucometabolic abnormality, pre-diabetes or diabetes. Acute coronary syndrome patients with diabetes are at higher risk for recurrent ischemic cardiovascular events than acute coronary syndrome patients without diabetes and drive a greater absolute benefit from high intensity statin therapy for or is my plus statin. And this precipitous high analysis from the Odyssey outcome trial, the cardiovascular efficacy and glucometabolic safety of alirikumab, the PCK9 inhibitor, which is available in Egypt, or placebo. And placebo, it doesn't mean placebo nil. It is high intensity statin, taking high intensity statin. Among people with diabetes, pre-diabetes or normal glycemia was compared. Those are the uh, precisified analysis we can see here, diabetic patients having medical history of diabetes, type 1 and type 2, HP1C more than 6.5% at baseline, two values of fasting serum glucose more than 126 milligram per deciliter, or use of diabetes medication. The pre-diabetes or the pre-diabetic patients are having HP1C more than 5.7% and less than 6.5% at baseline, or two fasting glucose values of more than 100 milligram per deciliter, but no more than one more than 126 milligram per deciliter. The normal glycemia, none of the above, the new onset diabetes are patients having more than two fasting glucose measurement, more than 126 milligram per deciliter, and more than two HP1C, more than 6.5%. And the investigators reported diabetes-related adverse event in those patients with initiation of diabetes medication, as, as we see from these charts. What are the results? Alirikumab had no adverse impact on fasting glucose or HP1C compared with placebo. We heard and we read and we knew that high intensity statins on the long run induce diabetes. But the PCK9 inhibitor, as I told you yesterday, alirikumab had no adverse impact on fasting glucose or HP1C compared with placebo. This is HP1C in the pre-diabetics and in the normal glycemic and the diabetic patients. And this is a fasting glucose. We see no incidence of new onset of diabetes. The incidence of cardiovascular events compared in placebo group was a, a, a greater in patients with versus uh, without diabetes. Because patients with diabetes are at high risk. We can see high MACE here, high coronary heart disease deaths, Non-fatal MI is high, ischemic stroke and unstable angina were high in diabetic patients. The patients with diabetes who take the, uh, the uh, alirikumab or the prevalent in the study show relative and absolute risk reduction, as we see here, with alirikumab on glucometabolic status.
the absolute risk reduction in diabetic patients was 2.3%, as we see. And we can see here the relative risk reduction favors alirucumab in those patients. No difference in new onset diabetes between alirucumab and placebo groups taking high intestinal as we see here in the pre-diabetics and the diabetics under normal glycemic. In summary, alirucumab efficacy and the glucometabolic safety in individuals with diabetes, pre-diabetes, or normal glycemia. The patients with acute core syndrome and diabetes are at very high cardiovascular risk, high risk of recurrent ischemic events for patients with acute coronary syndrome and diabetes, twofold versus normal glycemia, no evidence for an increased risk of new onset diabetes, and no impact on glycemic parameters in the longest cardiovascular outcome of PCK9 inhibition to date. And when reducing LDL cholesterol to 25 to 50 mg per deciliter with alitricumab, there are similar relative risk reduction, whatever status of the glucose metabolism, and greater absolute risk reduction in patients with diabetes than, than without whether normal glycemia or pre-diabetes. If we take a case study, for example, acute coronary syndrome patient with diabetes who could benefit from a lirikumab treatment, the patient demographics is 64 years old male. The clinical history have eight years previously after developing chest pain at exertion that became refractory to anti-ischemic therapy. The patient was submitted for PCI of the left anterior descending artery and uh, uh, a drug eluding stent was implanted and currently asymptomatic. This patient from the guidelines 2019 is a very high risk cardiovascular patient. The cardiovascular risk factors are type 2 diabetes for 20 years, the body mass index is 29, hypercholesterolemia for 10 years, hypertension for more than 30 years, as we see the patient have diabetes, the lipid profile LDL cholesterol 85 mg per deciliter, HDL cholesterol 52 mg per deciliter, and triglyceride 152 mg per deciliter. And the LDL cholesterol is above 55 mg per deciliter target. And we know that the target should be below the 55. And the current treatment is rosofastatin, 40 mg per deciliter, high intestinal statin. And Empaglifazine and linagliptin and aspirin and valsartan uh, 320 milligram. So the patient have a very high risk. He is diabetic. He has an LDL cholesterol above 55 milligram per deciliter, and he take high intestinal statin. In the guidelines, as we see, the acute coronary syndrome patient with diabetes here we can see is a very high risk patient. And according to the guidelines, the recommendation of the LDL cholesterol reduction of at least 50 milligram and an LDL goal below 55 milligram per deciliter should be considered. If the goals are not achieved with the maximum tolerated statin, the combination with azetamibe is recommended. And consider adding the PCK9 inhibitor if the goals are not achieved after four weeks on combination with etamib. And most recently, there is a few points which is published in the European Society of Cardiology recently, after uh, uh, one week ago. They started now to push the combination therapy from the start for acute coronary syndrome patients at very high risk. And I think that the guidelines will be changed next year. Here, the significant reduction in LDL cholesterol in real world life and a high percentage of patients achieving the recommended treatment targets were observed in a real world population over the course of 18 months patients with type 2 diabetes and specifically those insufficiently controlled showed a superior response to PCK9 inhibitor therapy. Still, they experienced a substantial number of cardiovascular events. Here are the guidelines, and here the very high risk, as we see, and lowering LDL cholesterol goals are recommended by 
the 2019 European Society of Cardiology and the uh, European Association of the Study of Diabetes Guidelines stated that it should be uh, in secondary prevention for patients at very high risk. The early daily goal should be a reduction of more than 50% and less than 55 milligram per deciliter in secondary prevention, and this is class 1A. And the statins, high intensity statins, are recommended as the first choice lipid lowering treatment in patients with diabetes and high LDL levels. Uh, administration of the statin is defined based on the cardiovascular risk profile of the patient and the recommended LDL cholesterol, this is class 1A. And in patients at very high risk with persistent high LDL cholesterol despite treatment with a maximum tolerated statin dose in a combination with isotomib or in patients with a statin intolerance, a PCK9 inhibitor like alirucumab is recommended and this is class 1A. Also in diabetes care, there's the standards of medical care in, di in the diabetics for patients of all ages with diabetes and a serious chronic cardiovascular disease, high intensity statin therapy should be added to lifestyle, and this is class A. And for patients with diabetes and a serious chronic cardiovascular disease, considered very high risk using a specific criteria if the LDL cholesterol is more than 70 mg per deciliter or maximally tolerated statin dose, consider adding additional LDL lowering therapy like azetamide or PCK9 inhibitors, this is class A. And for patients who do not tolerate the intended intestinal statin, we should use the PCK9. Also, in the consensus for the statement of the AECE and the ACE on their management of dyslipidemia and uh, prevention of cardiovascular disease algorithm, the patients at extreme risk who have progressive atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, including unstable angina, established clinical atherosclerotic disease plus diabetes or chronic kidney disease, uh, more than uh, uh, three or heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia or history of premature uh, acidosclerotic cardiovascular disease, less than 55 year male or more or less than 65 female, the LDL should be below uh, 55 milligram per deciliter as we see here. Also, this consensus show the extreme risk why we should use the BCK9 inhibitors in order to get the LDL cholesterol below the 55 milligram per deciliter in extreme risk or very high risk, on high moderate risk and low risk. The patient profile eligible for alirucumab, the PCK9 inhibitor, the cardiovascular disease, heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, and there are many. Our project in the EAVA, European, uh, the Egyptian Association of, the, uh, of uh, Vascular Biology and Atherosclerosis shows that we have in our community more than 40% now uh, heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia undiagnosed, the statin intolerance, homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, the indication for, uh, the are uh, eligible indication for Aliru Komeb. And thank you very much for your attention. Uh,